Hare Krishna. Is everyone everyone back with us? Yeah? Okay, so we're talking about Kamsa. Is Recording in progress. Kamsa is repenting his killing and he's speaking uh, philosophy to Vasudeva and Devaki. And Prabhupada describes in his purport, he said, Kamsa admitted his own fault, but whatever he had done was under the control of providence. Kamsa might have been the immediate, they had been cursed that previous, in their previous birth they were told, next life you will be killed by your father. So Kalanemi came as Kamsa and killed his sons, who had been his sons in previous life. And so it was providence. It, it, it couldn't be avoided. So he continues speaking to Devaki. Maharaj? Yes? Well, why is it written it was uh, Devaki's past grief? Why did she suffer the loss of six sons? No, it said, was their past deeds. Was their past deeds, right? It okay. was, Devaki is not under the law of karma. She's a Nitya Siddha. So, of course, in the Leela, her six sons are being, are being killed, but later on, Lord Krishna will come and he'll bring them back. And so for her, it's not karma. It's not... It, it's all, for her, it's lila. It's for the pastime, for the, the pastime of the Lord. And she's just facilitating the pastime. These six sons, they were actually demigods. And by taking birth from her womb and being killed, then they could be free of that curse and they could go back to heaven. So she was facilitating the the return to the heavenly planets of her six children. But the pure devotees, they're never under the law of karma. Although it appears to be like karma, it's not. It's actually the internal potency. So you can see both energies acting. There's the yoga maya and there's the maha maya. Kamsa's under the maha maya and Devakis under the yoga maya. A different thing. So Kamsa begs his brother-in-law and sister to be merciful. He said, I'm a poor-hearted person, but you're both saintly persons. So please excuse my atrocities. And having said that Kamsa fell at the feet of Vasudev and Devaki, his eyes full of tears of regret. Of course, the actual sign that he was genuine in this is that he would remain in that repentant mood. But we will see that the very next morning he totally changes. That when he's with Vasudev and Devaki, that has a very good effect on him and he feels his own guilt and he's begging forgiveness. So it, we see very clearly the influence of association. Being with Vasudev and Devaki, he's really being purified and he's regretting his, his behavior. He's also heard the words of the, the goddess De Durga, how she said that the child is already born to kill you. So, next verse goes on. Kamsa believed the words. Kams, fully believing in the words of the goddess Durga, Kamsa exhibited his familial affection for Devaki and Vasudev by immediately releasing them from their iron shackles. And when Devaki saw her brother actually repentant, while explaining ordained events, she was relieved of all anger. Similarly, Vasudev was also free from anger. Smiling, he spoke to Kamsa as follows. So Kamsa, 
can even smile about it. He's been hearing Kamsa speak about the nature of the, the soul and the body. So, this very, actually, this is very pleasing to somebody like Vasudev, who's a very elevated soul. Prabhupada explains, Devaki and Vasudev, both highly elevated personalities, accepted the truth presented by Kamsa, that everything is ordained by providence. Are you able to maintain that view yourself? When things go wrong, can we think this is the will of providence? This is Krishna's plan? What's the verse in the Bhagavatam which says like that? What's that, Prabhu? Yes, right. That's the verse I'm thinking of. Thank you. Yes. Tattenu Kampam. Right. One who tolerates all adverse conditions, accepting them to be reactions due to his past activities, but goes on with his devotional service, then he becomes qualified to become my unalloyed devotee. And so, devotees, we should have that kind of tolerance, that we accept everything, the arrangement of Krishna, right? We could say, due to my past karma, this has happened. So Vasudev and Devaki, they're actually happy to hear all this philosophy from Kamsa because they're great souls. So Vasudev is going to congratulate Kamsa that it's very nice that what you're speaking is very good. Prabhupada writes, therefore Vasudev and Devaki saw that behind all these incidents was a great plan devised by the Supreme Personality of Godhead because the Lord had already taken birth just like a human child and was in the safe custody of Yashoda. So everything was happening according to plan and there was no need to continue their ill feeling towards Kamsa. Thus they accepted Kamsa's words. So, of course, Vasudev and Devaki can feel very happy the Lord is their child, and they've put him in a safe place. They know he's not going to be harmed. Nobody knows. They've managed to take Lord Krishna over to Goku, and he's there in the home of Nanda Maharaj. And Devaki also, her, the, the child who she was having, Kamsa was not able to kill. But the child became the goddess Durga and rose up in the air, and then went off to Vana, Varanasi or somewhere. So it, it was actually, everything was going good for Vasudev and Devaki. Although their six children had been killed, but the seven, they saw the Lord come as the eighth child. So they're very happy. And they're seeing other divine arrangements. The Goddess Durga has also come. So they can understand the Lord is certainly watching them, taking care of them. They don't have to fear. They can see it. Yes? Can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Uh, Maras, I could understand about uh, how Hiranyaka is cursed and it worked. Means what is the criteria for the curse to work or uh, not to work? <laughs> well, we're, we're, I only know what it says in the scriptures, you know, what we're told in the commentaries, but it's certainly mentioned there uh, that Kamsa had cursed these sons of Kalanimi, because they approached Brahma. They didn't go through him. They directly worshipped Brahma to get empowerment from Brahma. Now, of course, Harani Kashipu himself had worshipped Brahma and taken benedictions from him. But he didn't think it proper that the sons of Kalanimi should go directly to Lord Brahma. He thought they should go to him first and then with his blessing only they could go to Brahma. So he was angry at them that they acted independently and therefore he put a curse on them. Now who can curse who? Well, remember, Haranyakashipu is also born in Brahmana family, <laughs> Kashyapa and Diti, they're, you know, it's a Brahmana family. 
So he, he, has some, he has some power. And he knew philosophy also. Just as, just as Kamsa knows philosophy. Kamsa, of course, was born in Kshatriya family. But he knows, they know the philosophy. They're the higher caste. And so they hear. They hear. They learn politics, how to deal with enemy, and so on. And they learn basic philosophy, the difference between the body and soul. So who can put curses on other people? Well, generally it's the brahmanas, and certainly Treta Yuga, they could do it. Kali Yuga, no brahmanas. But Treta Yuga, brahmanas could put curses. Yeah? Guru Maharaj, can I add one point for Bach? And the, he likes to chase his own daughter. And then the other people, like other sons, they, they were like normal and they know. They, they find him privately and talk with him. But these six, this six sons of Marichi, they laughed at him. So that time they were cursed. So they would take birth. And in their birth, as the sons of Kalanemi, previously they laughed at Brahma, but this lifetime they are going to pray to Lord Brahma to get uh, mystic powers, and then they would be cursed by Hiranyakashipu, um, and then so the things is going on. So it is related. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, good point. Brahma had cursed the sons of Marichi because they were laughing. He cursed them to become this, this, be born in the family of Haranyakashipu, right? And they became the sons of Kalanemi, and he's connected to Haranyakashipu. I don't know, is Kalanemi one of the sons of Haranyakashipu? Uh, one of the sons of, yeah, Haranyakashipu, is it? Yeah? Yes. So in this way they got, they got cursed by, first of all, for laughing at Brahma, then they got cursed. Very difficult to please people. <laughs> you have to be very careful, but don't get cursed. And Prabhupada also wrote, there's that one letter Prabhupada wrote to the GBC. He said, just like uh, Vidura, just like Yamaraj got cursed and became Vidura, Yamaraj got cursed because he did some unfair judgment on the, the great yogi who got arrested with all the other dacoits. Uh, what was the name of that yogi? Anyway, there was... Mandukamuni. Mandukamuni. Manduka Muni. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, Mandukamuni. Right, Mandukamuni. So Prabhupada wrote to the GBC. He said, just like Yamaraj got cursed, he said, the GBC have to be careful always to deal fairly and give proper judgments. Otherwise, you may also be cursed to become like Vidura to become, you know, to take birth in the Sudra family and become Vidura. Of course, we do it for Yamaraj it was good, because Yamaraj got a chance to go preaching. So maybe GBC can also think like that, if they get cursed, they can also, more preaching, more freedom for preaching, traveling and preaching. Okay, so a lot of cursing and counter-cursing. So Vasudev is speaking to Kamsa and he's congratulating Kamsa. He said, what you said about this philosophy is correct. Persons in the bodily concept of life, lacking self-realization, they, 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 they differentiate in terms of this is mine and this belongs to another. Right? This is the ignorance we're thinking. This is mine, the bodily concept, aham and mamiti. Prahlad Maharaj was always trying to tell his father that we shouldn't think in terms of friends and enemies. We should see everyone equally. Not everyone is our... Not, there's, we shouldn't make dif difference. We shouldn't differentiate who is a friend, who is an enemy. We should be equal to everyone, Father. Of course, the demons, they don't think like that, the asuras, they have to distinguish. And Vasudev continues, uh, persons with the vision of differentiation are imbued with the material qualities, lamentation, jubilation, fear, 
envy, greed, illusion, madness. So this, these, all these different emotions can be due to the bodily concept of life. Uh, Prabhupada makes a, an important point in the purport here, the second half of the purport, Prabhupada said, when a devotee under the protection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is to suffer because of faults in his past deeds, he passes through only a little misery by the grace of the Lord. Although the disease of a devotee is due to mistakes committed sometimes in the past, he agrees to suffer and tolerate such miseries, and he depends fully on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus he is never affected by material conditions of lamentation, jubilation, fear, and so on. A devotee never sees anything the same point, everything, we're responsible. Krishna said, I'm not responsible for other people's sinful activities. So we don't remember all the nonsense things we've done in the past, but we're here in the material world, so we can understand we're not so pure. We had to take an, a birth in the material world. So we want to make, make this our last birth. We want to finish up our business, go back home, back to Godhead. That is the real, a real purpose, a real business. So Sukadeva Goswami continues, text 28, Thus having been addressed in purity by Devaki and Vasudev, who were very much appeased, Kamsa felt pleased, and with their permission he entered his home. So Kamsa goes home, he's feeling happy, but then after the night passes, the next morning, Kamsa summons his ministers and informs them all that what he had what had been spoken by Yoga Maya. Now who are the ministers of Kamsa? Uh, Kamsa's ministers mentioned by Srila Jiva Goswami three are very prominent, Pralamba, Chanura and Keshi. Right. Yeah, these kind of people. Kamsa's ministers, these big demons, they, they have the ability that they can change form, they can assume any form they want. And so you get demons like Baka and Aga and Putana, and we see them changing forms. These are all the different ministers of Kamsa. And we can see they're powerful people. So Kamsa informs his ministers about what had happened. What, and he tells them about what Yoga Maya had spoken to him. Right? Yoga Maya, who had revealed that he was to slay Kamsa, had already been born somewhere else. The child who was going to slay Kamsa had already taken birth somewhere else. Mm. So when the ministers hear Kamsa's statement, the, the, the ministers, and they're described, in text number 30 is described, they were not very expert in their dealings. They're demons. They don't care about other people. They don't have feelings so much. They're not worried about, they only think about themselves. So they were demons, real demons, and they were enemies of the demigods. So they've heard, they hear Kamsa speak in that way and they give their opinion. They're going to tell Kamsa, look, King Kamsa, what they think. So people who are not, dev the devotees, they will have good qualities. 
But those who are asuras, the non-devotees, they're always struggling. Well, they have no good qualities. They're, they're just the opposite, right? Yashyasti bhakti bhagavati akinchana sarvair gunas tatra samase asura. Harava bhakta shya kato mahagana manogate nasati bhavato bahi. One who is not a devotee, he may be very expert at maintaining the family or he may be very expert in mystic yoga, but he cannot have any good qualities. Why not? Who can explain why they don't have any good qualities? Srinivas Prabhu, can you tell us? Why do the demons not have any good qualities? Now we heard Kamsa is speaking philosophy. Maharaja, is it because they're envious of Krishna? Because they're envious of Krishna? Yes, well, that could be one reason. Yes. They won't accept the authority. They don't accept. They, of course, they don't ex accept spiritual authority. They are self-centered life. They live their self-centered life. Yeah. According to the verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Yashasti Bhakti Bhagavit Akinsha, it describes that they're always struggling with the three modes of nature. They're always struggling with it. They constantly struggle with the three modes of nature. You know, sometimes they're in goodness, just like Kamsa was speaking philosophy, a little bit of goodness there, even though he's a big demon. The next morning, he's got all the demons, all his ministers come, and he's back in the mode of passion and ignorance again. So that's the nature of these demons. They're in the modes of nature. There's a pastime, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada went, went to the, the post office and the man saw that he was, Prabhupada was a sadhu and he was asking him about it. And Prabhupada was preaching a bit to the man. But the man said, well look, he said, I never do anything wrong. I never harm anybody. I don't steal anything. I'm honest. I'm truthful. Why I need to chant Hare Krishna? What will you say? Why do you need to chant? If you're, if, you're, if you're honest, you're truthful, you're clean, you're moral, do you need to chant Hare Krishna? Uh, um, Maharaj, earlier life he might have done some pious acts. Yes, they might have done some pious acts, but why do they need to, why do they, why do they still need to take up devotional service? Yes, Maharaj Prabhupada says that all the good qualities are like many, many, many zeros. So even if we have a million zero, it is of actually no value unless there is a one who is, which is, uh, the one is Krishna. So without Krishna consciousness, all our good qualities have no values. Yes, right. Good. Good example. Thank you. And how do we get that one? How do we add Krishna? Only a person, only a devotee can give Krishna. Right. Only we, have, we have to take up devotional service. Otherwise, we're in the modes of nature. Sometimes goodness, sometimes passion, sometimes ignorance. We have to get out of the modes. And we have to take up Krishna consciousness fully. We have to chant, we have to hear. If we keep ourselves engaged in devotional service, we can transcend the modes. It's not enough just to have some knowledge. We see Kamsa has some knowledge. It's not enough. Does Kamsa have any bhakti? No, 
not a drop. He's no bhakti. Hmm. So we, we have to cultivate the bhakti. That's the important thing. That will help us to get out of this material condition. Maharaj, can I ask a question? Yes, Prabhu, please. Maharaj, I see, uh, I myself, I am victim of three modes. Sometimes I have good feelings, sometimes uh, passionate desires, sometimes uh, ign I am ignorant. So even after taking to bhakti, I have not transcended the modes. Yes, of course, we're coming out of the material world. We have to keep ourselves engaged in Krishna consciousness. It's going to take some time. We have to concentrate fully. It's just tivrena bhakti yogena. It has to be intense devotion to get out of the material condition of life. We have to do that very strongly and very convinced to engage ourselves fully, wholeheartedly in the service of Krishna. And that will get us out of... It's going to take some time because we've been in the material world a long time. A long time we've been here in this material world. For many lifetimes we've been cultivating the Kamsa mentality. We've been cultivating all the demonic natures. We've, had, we've been in this world very long. We're Nijabadas. Right? So it's going to take some time. But we have to be sure that we have the process, the easiest, best process to get free of the material nature. Yeah, we have to admit that sometimes we fall into these modes. The lower modes can get us, even though we're doing devotional service. Right? Third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, Kapila Shiksha. We read about devotional service in the modes. So even you may be on the altar, you may be still in the mode of ignorance or passion. Doesn't mean you're actually really transcendental. We have to come up to that level of pure devotion. So we concentrate, we get, pull ourselves, we have to work to come up to the mode of goodness. And then from the mode of goodness, we can come up to that Shuddha Sattva condition. So it takes some effort. It's not so easy, we know. But we're on the right path. We have the best process. We have to have full faith in what we're doing. And then Krishna will help us more and more. It just takes some practice. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, is that our devotion, what we are going to perform, is like predestined? Like whether we'll become pure devotee or we'll fall down or we'll have something. Is it predestined? I know. Like how much we are going to do. Well, like the, for pure devotees. But, but there is such a thing as causeless mercy. So causeless mercy is not going to be predestined. So if we get causeless mercy, you get the mercy. Somehow we get the mercy of pure devotees. It's causeless. So it's not, when coming to Krishna consciousness, it's not really predestined. It's mercy, causeless mercy. But Bhagavad Gita says that, Yesam Tvanta Gatam Papa, Om Jana Nam Prani Karmana. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, ah, yeah. So, so it says like so that. But we are free from all the sinful activities. And earlier also we were not, all well, that sinful results have been vanquished and this life I am not doing, then we will be uh, engaged in with the determination. Yes, right. Then, so that's, that's describing how we come to the platform of doing service with determination. And what did Prabhupada say about that? He said, I am creating your pious activities. All right. By Prabh because we contacted Prabhupada, Prabhupada's movement. And so it created our pious activity. Was that, was that predestined? There, there is a statement, there's, a, one, there's a, one shloka, it said, Krishna, Krishna chooses who will become a devotee, who will not. Mm -hmm. So there's the arrangement of Krishna. 
it's, it doesn't depend on our karma. It's certainly not karma. That is refuted many times. The devotional service doesn't depend on our karma. But it, the, there's the mercy of Krishna. And that mercy of Krishna comes more through his devotees. Maharaj, it is interesting to know that shloka about Krishna choosing Shlokas. his devotees. Krishna chooses. Yes. Yeah. I, I so I, I have to. I'd have to have a. It may take me some time to find that sloka, but I know there was a sloka like that. Uh, I'll have to think about it where I last saw it. And Maharaj, in addition to uh, your point regarding Shrinivasan's question, Prabhupada also says that Shrinivatam uh, Swakatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. So that is, that's how we earn Punya. Yes. yes, right. Of course, we have to get that association to get that environment to hear. Right? We have to put ourselves into that environment where we can hear to get w with the association of devotees. So first comes the association of devotees and then we get to hear. And you are creating punya for us. And you are creating it for me. Right? We help each other. I'm studying here with you. Together we're studying. It's helping us all. We help each other. This is devotional service. Help each other. With Sankirtan, right? We chant together. Okay, text 31. Going ahead. O king of the Boja dynasty, beginning today, this is the minister speaking to Kamsa, we shall kill all the children born in all the villages, towns and pasturing grounds within the past 10 days or slightly more. That is a very heavy thing to say, right? Going to kill all the small children. This is the mood of the demons, you see. They don't think about what's good or what's bad. They don't care about others. They, they, oh, child is born to kill Kamsa? Okay, we'll kill all the children. We don't know which child it was, but we'll go and kill all the children. Of course, Krishna and Balaram, they're safe. No harm can come to the children in Gokul. Cool. Who are going to be killed? It's all the children of Kamsa's people who are going to be killed. So the, the curse works against themselves. They actually go around killing all the children born in the demon families. They don't go to Gokul cool to kill the devotee. They can't go there because Gokul is a holy dam. It's protected by the Lord. So they're cursed. This is the nature of the demons cursing. That it, they just do more harm for themselves than any good. They were thinking they're going to get revenge. They're going to protect themselves, but of course they just they just did more harm to their own people. So the demons are encouraging King Kamsa. They say the demigods always fear the sound of your bowstring. We said Kamsa was very powerful. He had defeated the demigods. They were running from him. So he was really a powerful man. While being pierced by your arrows, which you discharged on all sides, some of them who were injured by the multitude of arrows, but who desired to live, fled the battlefield, intent on escaping. So the demigods... They, they didn't follow the, the etiquette. They should have died on the battlefield, but instead they ran away. So anyway, this is what the, demi, the demons are saying. Whether it actually happened like that, we don't know. But we do know, we are told, that Kamsa was very powerful and he had defeated the demigods. And the, this way the, the demons want to encourage Kamsa that he has nothing to fear. You don't have to fear and there's nothing for you to worry about. These demigods, they're straw, they will bow to your feet. And they say like that, O oh Lord, we are very much afraid of you. 
They're speaking on behalf of the demigods. The demigods would say like that to King Kamsa. So several verses speaking about the demigods and how the, the, the ministers of Kamsa are talking about how the demigods are not very powerful. They forget how to use weapons. They said the demigods, they're just in busy in sense gratification. So they forget how to use their weapons and they become fearful or attached to something other than fighting. So they, in this way they're encouraging Kamsa that you don't have to worry. You, you will easily defeat these demigods. They're, they're nothing compared to you. And then, text 36, we hear, because Kamsa may say, well, you're talking about the demigods, you say I can defeat the demigods, but he said, what about Lord Hari and Lord Shiva? They're very powerful demigods. I don't know if I can defeat them. So the demigods say, and in, in case Kamsa's thinking like that, the demigods bring up that, oh, Lord Hari, as for Lord Vishnu, who is Lord Hari, he is in seclusion in the core of the hearts of the yogis. So you don't have to worry about him. He's, in, in, he's hiding himself in the hearts of the yogis. And Lord Shiva, he's gone to the forest. Actually, one of the commentators said he's gone to Ilavritavarsh. And Ilavritavarsh, there are no men, there are no men there. There's only ladies. Lord Shiva is surrounded in Ilavritavarsh. And everyone who comes into that Ilavritavarsh, even if they're men, they become ladies. It's described in Srimad Bhagavatam how one Kshatriya came in there when Lord Shiva was there and he transformed, he, ch he became a woman, he took a woman's body. And so they said, Lord Shiva, he's in the forest there. No, they're not going to trouble you. And Lord Brahma, he's always doing austerities and meditation. And because he's doing austerities and meditation, he won't want to disturb his mind by fighting you. He's not going to get it all passionate because he's doing austerity and meditation. So in meditation, you know, people are all, be peaceful, just be quiet, Om Shanti, 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 you know, just like that. And so Lord Brahma, he's not going to fight. He's not got that kind of nature. You don't have to worry about him. So in this way, the, the, the demons are telling Kamsa, you don't have to worry. These demigods, they're not going to give you any trouble. Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, they're the chief of the demigods. They can't give you any trouble. So you can be free from all fear of the demigods. So just go and fight. So we will hear what is the plan, what, how these ministers, what is their plan. Text 37. Nonetheless, because of their enmity, our opinion is that the demigods should not be neglected. Therefore, to uproot them completely, engage us in fighting with them, for we are ready to follow you. <laughs> They're going to let Kamsa go in the front and they will follow behind, you see. They know Kamsa is more powerful than them, so put Kamsa in the front and he can lead the battle. They'll follow behind and they're going to fight the demigods. They want to put the demigods down. They want to suppress the whole Vedic culture. So te text 38, the, the, the demons, the ministers of Kamsa, they give an example and they talk about a disease. 
And if you neglect a disease, then it becomes more difficult to cure. When you go to the doctors and you have some problem, you ask, how long have you had it? That's one thing they'll always ask. How long has it been like that? How long have you had it? How long have you been doing this? They want to know. It's a very important part in the treatment. If you've had something for a long time, then it's much harder to cure. If you can get the disease quickly, then it's easier to get rid of. But if you've had it for a long time, so Kamsa's ministers say like that. He said, it's impossible to control later. So in the same way, they're talking about the demigods and Lord Vishnu who live and are worshipped wherever there are religious principles. And th these ministers, they know all about what the demigods encourage. Of course, they encourage religious principles. Religious principles means like satyam, sojam, daya, tapa, cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness, traditional culture, the Vedas, cows, brahmanas, sacrifice with proper remuneration. It's a part of the yajna. Whenever we do the yajna, we must give something to the priest, right? You call a priest to do a yajna, we must be sure to compensate them, give them something for their remuneration. Otherwise, the yajna is not complete. So these different things are all very important parts of the, the uh, foundation of the demigods, the cows and the brahmanas. We need cows because cows provide milk and from milk we get ghee and with ghee we can do yajna. And with the cows also we get cow dung, we can use cow dung for fuel. And the cows also create a very sanctified atmosphere just by their purity, by their mode of goodness. So the, these demons, ministers of Kamsa, they wanted to stop the whole thing. They wanted to get rid of all this. We don't need all these things. We don't need brahmanas. Cows also not important. Right? They, they, they think cows are just there to eat. That's the mood of the demons. So the, the, the ministers tell Kamsa, we shall kill the Vedic Brahmanas. Ah, you see the, the nature of the, the demons? They will kill the Vedic Brahmanas. It will be easy for them to kill the Vedic Brahmanas. They don't say we'll kill the demigods. That would be harder for them to go and fight the demigods. But they'll kill the Brahmanas. You know, Vedic Brahmanas, they're peaceful people, uh, just like... In the times of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, they wanted people to join the army. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati had a lot of people, a lot of brahmacharis and people living in the ashram. And they said, you should give your men to join the army. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, no, no. He said, look, my men are all weak and skinny. He said, they wouldn't be good fighters for you. <laughs> and the brahmanas are generally weak and thin. And Prabhupada also said, it, 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 we shouldn't get too, too fat, we shouldn't put on too much weight, we have to be careful not to get too fat. Prabhupada told one devotee, he called one devotee the fat one. So he would note if, if someone was overweight. And so Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati also, he said, my men, they're too weak and skinny, they cannot go to fight, they won't be good fighters get some other people. So here, Kamsa's ministers, they want to kill the brahmanas. It will be easy for them. They want, to, they want to stop all the offering of sacrifices and austerities and the cows that supply milk. They, they don't want milk, they want meat. That's the nature of the demons. If you tell them, can get milk. Oh no, just give me some meat. Beef burgers, right? 
this kind of thing. So we're hearing about the Vedic culture here. All the different elements of the Vedic culture are being described by the ministers of Kamsa. The Brahmanas, the cows, text number 41, Vedic knowledge, austerity, truthfulness, control of the mind and senses, faith, mercy, tolerance and sacrifice are the different parts of the body of Lord Vishnu and they are the paraphernalia for a godly civilization. So Kamsa's ministers also know what are the, the elements of a godly civilization. But they don't want these things. They know, but they, they want to get rid of these things. They want to destroy it all. Prabhupada writes purport at the end of text 41, the Krishna consciousness movement has started a Brahminical civilization, but especially when it is introduced in the Western countries, the Asuras try to impede it in many ways. Nonetheless, we must push forward this movement tolerantly for the benefit of human society. Yes. Even in India, what to speak of Western countries, even in India sometimes we get obstacles, we are opposed. In Prabhupada's time, there was an incident, uh, some magazine in Mumbai, they printed an article and they said, the Hare Krishna Kirtan is a disturbance. And they wanted to stop, the, the, and they were trying to organize the neighborhood the people in the neighborhood, that they should oppose the Hare Krishna people and they should get them to stop doing Sankirtan. So Prabhupada was furious and he said, immediately send more devotees, increase the Sankirtan. And he said, go to all the politicians, go to other newspapers and print articles and write article to this newspaper also and challenge them that this Sankirtan movement is the most authorized. It is the most powerful way of purifying the world. It's the best, the greatest benefit for human civilization and it should be recognized and encouraged. But the demons like Kamsa and his ministers, they will always try to oppose. They always want to try to stop. They tried to close our temple in England for a long time. George Harrison had, brought, had purchased that place, the Bhaktivedanta Manor, and they tried to close it down. It was a quiet little English village. And the people in the village say, you're disturbing us. You're disturbing our eating and drinking. So anyway, somehow, after a lot of trouble, a lot of fighting, a lot of protests, Finally, they agreed we could purchase land and make another entrance into the temple. And that's how we managed to keep the Bhaktivedanta Manor open. And then they had an issue in Russia. There was a city in Russia. They claimed Bhagavad Gita, not bona fide scripture. That this, it's not proper, it's not a good book. We should ban it. So then that was a big issue. They had to have a case, they had to make a lot of challenges and get good lawyers to come and defend and show that the Bhagavad Gita is. And they also got, of course, politicians from India to speak on our behalf about the Bhagavad Gita. So finally got ex they got permission to print it. But th there's always these obstacles. There's atheistic governments everywhere of atheistic governments. They just want to promote sense gratification, alcohol, meat eating, and taxation. So we are trying to fight these things. We are trying to introduce the Brahminical culture. We, we are preaching simple living and high thinking. People, these politicians, they don't want that. They want economic development. Economic development means sense gratification. 
if we develop the economy, means more sense gratification. And when they, when they go for elections, they have to promise the people more sense gratification. So that's the whole business of the world today. It's all on sense gratification. And you can do anything you want. You can have abortions all you want, birth control, you can kill cows, so many things going. And then people wonder, why are there diseases like the, this pandemic? Why disasters, so many people dying? Because we're so sinful. So 5,000 years ago, in the time of Lord Krishna, it was also like that. The world has not changed very much, right? Text 42, Lord Vishnu, the super soul within the core of everyone's heart, is the ultimate enemy of the Asuras and is therefore known as Asura Dvi. He is the leader of all the demigods. Because all the demigods, including Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, exist under <coughs> exist under his protection. The great saintly persons, sages and Vaishnavas, also depend on him. To persecute the Vaishnavas, therefore, is the only way to kill Vishnu. So Give the Vaishnavas trouble. Persecute the devotees. Give them trouble. That will stop. That will stop Lord Vishnu. Because Lord Vishnu, he's getting pleasure from the devotees. The devotees are offering yagya. They're offering their sacrifices to Vishnu. They do everything for the pleasure of Vishnu. Yagnavai Vishnu. So if we can stop the devotees from all this, then Lord Vishnu will also be stopped. No more yagya. Just like in the times of Maharaj Venu, before Maharaj Prithu, Maharaj Venu, demonic Venu, he stopped all the yagya. And when the yagya all stopped, fourth canto, what happened? With no yagya anymore, what happened? Maharaj Venu is ruling. Earth stopped supplying the necessary ingredients. Yes. No grains. The land wouldn't yield any crops. Maharaj Prithu had to come and he had to force the earth to yield. Okay, text 43, Sukadeva Goswami continued, Thus having considered the instructions of his bad ministers, Kamsa, who was bound by the laws of Yamaraj and devoid of good intelligence, because he was a demon, decided to persecute the saintly persons, the brahmanas, as the only way to achieve his good fortune. So Prabhupada picks up the verse from Lochandas Thakur, that final verse of Paramakaruna, that, uh, where he sings about Yamaraj is punishing me by not allowing me to be attracted to the Sankirtan movement. Right? Bahu, huh? How does it go? Apana karamai bunjai samana kahe lochana das. Yamaraj is punishing me, not allowing me to be attracted by the Sankirtan movement. So here also, the bad ministers of Kamsa, they were bound by the laws of Yamaraj, devoid of good intelligence. So we see the effect of bad association. We reflect the qualities of the people we associate with. So it's very important to get the right association so that we can prosper, we can flourish in our Krishna consciousness. So we're, we're so fortunate to be in the Krishna consciousness movement 
that to have regular programs, kirtan and sadhu sangha. Just think, look at Kamsa. You know, people forget sometimes when they go off, when they leave Krishna consciousness and they go and work in the job. Just like there was one devotee, my god brother, my friend, he's still in the movement. He thought about getting married and he wrote to Prabhupada about getting married. And Prabhupada said, well, he said, it's up to you. He said, you want to get married? He said, but you know, marriage means responsibility. If you take a wife, you have to be ready to support her. And it may mean you have to go and work in the factory. Are you ready to do that? So Prabhupada wrote to him like that, you know, quite a heavy letter. And so Prabhupada, he, this, this, at this time the devotee was temple president, and he was, you know, a very good devotee, and he still is. And so Prabhupada encouraged him, you know, told him, if you can remain brahmachari, it will be very good for you. So these demons, they, all followers of Kamsa, and they took any form, and Kamsa gave them permission, go everywhere and persecute the saintly persons. Bad for them, and actually death was waiting for them, but they began to persecute all the saintly persons. They brought so much trouble to the saintly people. Of course, ultimately they're all going to be killed by Lord Krishna. So the chapter concludes with a very powerful verse, very important verse, which Prabhupada often quotes. My dear king, when a man persecutes great souls, all his benedictions of long longevity, beauty, fame, religion, blessings and promotion to higher planets will be destroyed. Can you think of some examples? People who did this, Mahat Atikrama. Mahat Atikrama, they, they, they trespass, trespassing against great personalities. Who died these kinds of death due to this? Can you give some examples? Yes, Maharaji? Daksha. Daksha, Haraji Kashipu. Mr. Nair was... Uh... Mr. Nair got killed by Narasimha because he tried harming Prabhupada. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. Nair. Uh, Maharaj? Yeah? Uh, uh, Venu. Mar yes, Venu. Venu. Venu was cursed Venu. by the Brahmins, right? Venu. Sons of Sagar Maharaj. Sagar Maharaj. The sons of Sagar Maharaj. Yes, very good. Yes. Sons of Sagar Maharaj, they committed offence against Kapila Muni, and they were they had they died, burned to ashes. Yes, many examples like this. So it's it's a warning, how careful we have to be in dealing with the devotees, and so we should always be very humble and offer our respects to the saintly persons. It doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot to please them, and it doesn't take a lot to offend them also. We have to be very cautious. So try, we always pray to Krishna every day. Prabhupada had us every day. We must offer obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. Prabhupada had brought a lot of uh, senior devotees to India to begin the preaching mission in India. It was 1969, 1970. They, he brought temple presidents from America. They were mostly all leaders. He wanted to bring the best men to India. But because they'd all been managers, they were all having their own temples. Now they were all working together. It was difficult for them to get along with each other. And they were young, Westerners, so passionate. They were new in Krishna consciousness. They were not very fixed in the mode of goodness. And they would often quarrel and argue and fight with each other. So Prabhupada saw what was happening. So Prabhupada told them, every morning you must all offer obeisances to each other. And that's how in the morning program, after Mongol Arti every morning, we offer our obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. 
very important. And that frees us. If unknowingly we have offended a devotee, then we can get freed from the offences by bowing at the feet of all the devotees. Okay, so with, we'll stop here. Are there any questions? Anyone has any questions or anything? Maharaj, Bibula Prasad Prabhu has any question. Yes. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, yes. Maharaj, you, uh, thank you, Maharaj. You uh, were speaking of this very important tradition, like uh, how, of paying obeisances to the uh, to the Vaishnavas in the in this one started. Can you, Maharaj, uh, like, uh, 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 can you can you tell us like when, like in which year, uh, approximately it started, like? No, this is part of history, and then. Well, well, I said, I said. I said when it started, I said when Prabhupada first brought all the devotees, he brought his India Sankirtan party, actually World Sankirtan party he called it. 1970? Yes, or 69 even. But okay, you, can check, you can check in the Prabhupada Lila Amrita when they all came to India. Okay, so, first thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, any other question? Okay. Hare Krishna, yes, Maharaj. yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, um, we were talking about the importance of not offending devotees, but uh, sometimes uh, when we feel hurt, uh, how can we have in ourselves the humility that it is okay for? You know, we, we shouldn't think too high about ourselves. Uh, I don't know if I'm making the point. Uh, yes, I understand your point very well. It's a very good, important point, very clear, yeah. Yes, we, we all have to worry about this, because we all tend to have an, a good opinion about ourselves. <laughs> We have a good, a good opinion about ourselves and often a, a, a bad opinion about others. So we have to be, we have to, be, we have to, we have to really reflect on our dealings with the devotees. Am I dealing properly? Am I re offering proper respect? Now somebody offends us. We have to learn tolerance on these things. Lord Chaitanya taught us Trinada Peace on each and, and we're told to wear that verse on a thread around our neck. We have to constantly remind ourselves. So our meditation can be like this. I have to become more tolerant. I have to tolerate. And if we think I'll get revenge, but then that's not good either. You know, they say an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But they say if you follow that principle, everyone will be, be blind. No one will have any eyes. Nobody will have any teeth. We'll all knock out each other's eyes and teeth. So that won't be very nice. So we think if somebody offends us, we should think, thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> we, can, we can think, we, we think thank you, Prabhu. I, I, and what happened, there was a case, Prabhupada was giving a lecture one time. And in the middle of the lecture, one man stood up and began to hurl abuse at Prabhupada and said very nasty things to Prabhupada. And then he walked out. How did Prabhupada respond? Prabhupada said, I must have offended him in my previous life. So he's teaching us how we can take that, you know, kind of action. If, some, some, if we offend somebody or somebody's offended by us, Somehow, we don't know why, the, the, why we offended them, but we can think that I have to tolerate. I must have done something to deserve this. I don't know what, but I must have done something to deserve it. So, thank you, Krishna. There was one devotee, he was a very, very good book distributor. And he was, you know, he was a healthy young man with quite a powerful physical body. So he was distributing books one day and he offered a book to someone and so the man just punched him in the face. So what did he do? He said, thank you, Krishna. He could have retaliated, but it would have made a big scene. It would have been very, you know, not good. And so he just tolerated. Okay, thank you, Krishna. 
and he turned away and went to somebody else. So we have to develop this kind of mood, this talk. we have to understand there will be difficulties. The test of Haridas Thakur being beaten in 22 marketplaces and he prayed to Lord Chaitanya, don't let the people beating me suffer. Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross and he prayed, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And the test of Buddha, well, you know, there are going to be tests, so we have to see things happen to us. It's tests. And the tests will come more and more as we progress in Krishna consciousness. It's, you know, there will always, there will be these tests, but we just take shelter of Krishna, hold on to the holy name and surrender to Krishna. Krishna is our protector. Krishna is our only shelter. We have to be convinced. All right? Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you. Yes, any other? Yes? I have a comment on this. Can oh, I add something? Yeah, yeah please. Because recently I was also thinking deeply about this question and then uh, there is a purport by Srila Prabhupada in just in the last section we have studied is in the chap 10th canto chapter 8 and verse 41 and in that purport that verse is mentioning Mother Yashoda she was confused she saw the universal form in Krishna's mouth and she's thinking maybe I'm illusion this and that and the purport Prabhupada said one sentence really make me so much impressed he said if we are beset by some problem and we cannot find any cause, then our attitude should be just to surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and pay our respectful obeisances to Him. Then our, our position is secure. So I, I just want to share this part. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Pay our respects to the Lord and then our position is secure. Oh. Yes. Because also recently His Holiness Sai Padaka Maharaj, he organized a brainstorm for all the ladies. Like, uh, then he said, we have to think what we can do for the ladies, how we should pay obeisances to the Lord. So I also, that time I was, I came across this purport, I was thinking that is a good way. We can always pay respect to obeisances. When some problem, we, we are beset by some problem which we cannot find the cause. Yes, definitely there will be problems, we don't know the cause. So we just understand it's the arrangement of Krishna, huh? accept it as the arrangement of Krishna. Is that right? Yes, yes Guru Maharaj. Also Guru Maharaj, I want to ask you, in, you mentioned one verse, you said maybe from Bhagavatam said uh, Krishna chooses who can become his devotee. I find a similar verse in the 10th canto, chapter 13, verse 54. In the first paragraph of the Prabhupada's purport, he mentioned, Nayam Atma Pravacha Nena Labhyo. The Supreme Lord is not obtained by expert explanations, by vast intelligence, or even by much learning. He is obtained only by one who he himself chooses. To such a person, he manifests his own form. This is from Mundaka Upanishad. Okay. Is this the verse? That's in the purport of 10, chapter, uh, Canto 10, which chapter? Chapter 13. Chapter 13. Yes, 1 3. And verse number? 54. Okay. In the very beginning of purport. Okay, so you studied that recently, did you? I, I translated this part last year during lockdown. Lock, because this is the chapter. And last year during lockdown, Bhagavatam. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you very much, Chilangi Maharaji. Very helpful. Okay, so we'll finish here now. Thank you so much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go, go back to Vrindaki. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.